Um, so let's kick off. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about building a real-time virtual classroom in just minutes. Um, I guess first and foremost, am I actually going to show you how to do that? Is it actually going to be in just minutes? Uh, well, yes, it is. Um, and actually, it's a double yes. Today, we're going to talk through two ways uh, that you can do this. First of you, for those of you who are not technical or do not want to build, I'm going to show you how to use a ready-to-go solution that will give you everything you need to run amazing online classes. If you are, however, looking to build your own application or you have a big idea or you just need a starting point, we'll also go through a starter project that we've created that you can clone uh, and make into your, your very own. Um, I did want to keep this quite high level. Uh, I don't know how technical the audience is and I obviously want it to be enjoyable for everybody. So if you are technical and you would just prefer to look at code, um, you can dive straight in. I will drop these two links in the chat if you would like to do that. Um, and I will obviously show them again at the end of the, the talk uh, if you want to check it out. So by the ways of introduction, hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm the head of solutions and customer success at Daily. I recognize I'm wearing the same t-shirt in this picture that I am right now. I assure you, I do have other clothes. I just like to wear this t-shirt when, when online. Uh, and yeah, a little bit about daily. I do want to stress that I'm aware that making this talk all about daily and us and our products is maybe no fun, uh, but just to establish like an understanding, please know that everything I'm showing you today is built on our platform um, and I'll try and keep it abstract as best I can. Uh, we're, we're kind of also sponsoring the summit. So thank you for everyone for being here and then joining the talk. Our kind of goal at daily is to help millions of developers add video and audio to their, their websites and apps. If you want to learn more about us, the, maybe the best thing to do is you can head on over to daily.co. If you want to reach out to me directly, my email is john at daily.co. And again, I'll drop those at the end of the talk. If you want to reach out, um, so yeah, I, I think mostly everyone is probably here to see how to get an online classroom set up and how to do that quickly. Um, alongside the how, I'll just very, very quickly touch on the why. Uh, I'm not from the ed tech sector. So when I was doing some research, I found some of this stuff very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of incredible stats out there about the online education and how that has changed throughout the pandemic and after the pandemic. I think these are things that you guys are probably mostly uh, aware of and understand, or there's probably other folks at the conference that are talking to this much better than I can. But that said, there were some things that stood out to me as a techie that I just wanted to touch on. So yeah, I think no matter which way in which, uh, which you interpret the statistics, it's exciting to see that we're empowering teachers as global creators and improving the way we learn. You know, research is suggesting that online has a part to play in increasing the intent retention of information and it can take less time. For postgraduates, online education can help upskill without major lifestyle impact. I know I've done an awful lot of that myself uh, and it can often work out cheaper by doing it online. And I think one of the things for me that was actually really frightening when I was looking at this is in some geographies, you know, there are insane teacher shortages and online technologies are being used to manage and soften that crisis. Um, that's great, you know, and hopefully those sort of things will, will paint a clearer picture in the future. But everybody does learn differently. Uh, online classes are not for everybody. And I think the kind of thing that I'm seeing in the trend is that you can have both. There is a hybrid model that emerges. It does provide flexibility for students where distance learning can help support other aspects of life, but the in-person social nature of school remains. Uh, lessons can live on beyond the classroom in digitized form. And unfortunately for people like me that used to spend their sick days playing video games, maybe that is not so much the case anymore. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pause two seconds because I'm jumping between tabs, check chat, okie dokie. Um, I think most of us are familiar, uh, sorry, I lost my, I think most of us are familiar with the online call providers such as Meet and Zoom. Um, but perhaps you're not aware that browser protocols and open source technologies exist that provide de developers the opportunity to craft their own experiences. Actually, this website we're on right now, Hopin, is using WebRTC under the hood, um, and it's a really exciting time for that. What it means for developers is you can own and design that end user experience that is perfect for your product. You can keep it all on platform, there's no downloads needed, and you can create a really seamless integrated call experience. Um, you can also provide a solution that kind of works anywhere whether it's a laptop or you know a mobile device or something in between, 
um, WebRTC will work. There is a lower barrier for entry for teachers. Uh, you can make it simple. You know, back in the day, you would have to have really complicated software setups to support, you know, all the different camera types and such. But these days, a lot of that can be brought into the browser and facilitate all kinds of interesting use cases. It is new and really exciting and nascent technology. It's actually quite old, though it's about 10 years old now. Um, but technology is, the technology is unlocking lots of opportunities to innovate. Tools and companies like Daily are kind of trying to bring that developer time to value down. So technical investment uh, can be focused on the product and the actual classroom experience that you want to create. This is probably the most technical slide in this talk, by the way. Uh, I'll try and make it more fun and high level from now on. So let's get started. Um, one of our North Stars at Daily, which I kind of just touched on, is really reducing down developers' time to value when it comes to video and audio in their applications. For some, uh, this means a hosted, ready-to-go call cool user interface with all the kind of turnkey features that you're used to um, with some ability to customize and flex it. So we have a product that we call the pre-built UI. Uh, it allows you to run a call cool experience, record, stream, transcribe, speech to text, that kind of thing. You can customize it to match your brand. You can have lots and lots of people on a call and soon to be lots more. Uh, it's available in 15 languages. You can, it scales globally and has a lot of uh, detailed metrics behind it should you need to troubleshoot. And yeah, most importantly, the reason we're here is it can be set up in minutes. So it's really easy. It's four steps. You can go to our website at daily.co. You can get started there for free. You can set up your account details and domain, navigate to your dashboard and create a meeting room for your class and copy and embed the daily call frame to your app. And there's a little snippet that I put there, but just for illustrative purposes, you would need to put your own meeting room in where it says daily room URL in capitals. You can put that onto your website and, and away you go. Just to prove this uh, and show what that whole process looks like and yeah, really kind of stress that this is as easy as I'm making it out to be. I asked one of my colleagues, Dom, just to re record a really quick screen session and time it just so we can see what that looks like. So we'll go through that now, the timer running at the bottom left. Dom, you took a long time going to the sign up button, but that's good, we're, we're on our way. So, the email process, sign up, um, you obviously have to validate your email, choose the subdomain that you want to use. This is just your identifier. If you want to, you can at this point do a test call to see how it all looks. Uh, and there you go, you can get started. And what you're presented with now is your domain dashboard. You can go to rooms, create a room, create a room in whatever form and shape you like. And what that will allow you to do now is with the code that I showed you earlier, create your, your embeddable call frame. So Dom's copying the link here. All of our documentation has everything you need as well. And this is the code that I showed you earlier. We're at one minute now. into whatever coding platform you like or whatever, however your app is set up. I guess the main point is that we're putting an iframe with the daily pre-built in it. Um, and if you navigate to that page or navigate to your page, if it's hosted, hopefully if we're all good. There we go, uh, pretty fully featured call experience. And what was that? That was one minute, 41 seconds. So that is how you can get started straight away uh, without any, pretty much any technical know-how with very little code. Um, if you wanna try that yourself uh, or want to know more, daily.co pre-built is, is, is how to do that. But yeah, for those of you that want to take it a step further or maybe want to create your own experience or have a big idea and just need a starting point, uh, we created a demo project for this talk um, that kind of builds on some of the concepts around a virtual classroom. Um, for those that are technical, it's a React and Next.js application. And as I mentioned, it's built on the daily platform. What does it include? Um, we have a web call user interface for both teacher and student. That's quite important because the teacher has various different moderation tools or ways in which they want to view the, the room, whereas the student view has to kind of be focused on the teacher so that, that that's uh, they're not distracted. 
Uh, there is a virtual whiteboard, which we know from talking to, to various different customers that we have is a really important tool for online education. There are some degree of some degree of moderation. I think you know one of the things we know about other other platforms is being able to unmute yourself or controlling who can speak and when uh, is a problem. So we've tried to integrate some stuff there to give you a starting point for how to, to do that for the teacher. You can poll the class with a question. Um, not much more to say there. Raise hand to speak so you're not interrupting by unmuting. If you or if you're not able to unmute, you can raise the hand and the teacher can unmute you. Um, and real time speech transcription. Uh, which is really exciting, but I should say you do need to do an additional setup step for that, but all of it is in the README um, and I can show you how that looks. When you download and set up this project, the first thing we kind of guide you through is the creation of the room and whether you want a specific start and start date and time and the duration of the class and whether you want transcriptions enabled. So you kind of get this nice little setup screen that talks you through how to do that. And then you're presented with two options. You can either join the class as a teacher or join the class as a student. And what we what we provide you with is a, a share student link that you can send out. You can copy that and send it to people so they can join as a student. But we're going to assume we're going to look at this from both perspectives for this case. So joining as a teacher, obviously you're waiting for others to join. Um, all all of what you're seeing now, by the way, these interfaces are as part of the demo project that we've provided. They're just screenshots of that. I would love to show a live demo or jump into that, but obviously having everyone kind of do that uh, as well as this session live would be a little bit complicated. So I've tried my best to make it make it simple. The teacher has quite a unique view. Uh, they, they have what is a grid layout where they can see all of the students and paginate between. Um, they also have a lot more options than the student would if they were to join this class. The first is they can start and stop transcription. Um, which you can kind of see at the bottom. I've just put I'm a transcription subtitle, but yeah, you, as you speak, that would get transcribed and overlaid. You can allow students to talk. Uh, at the moment, no one can talk. Uh, it's disabled. So only you as the teacher or other call owners in the room can, can talk. It also shows you how long the class has left to, uh, based on the, the start time and date that you set and a helpful button to send anyone else a link should they want to join. We also have a tray at the bottom, which has a whole ream of functionality, some of which I'll go into separately. You've got the whiteboard, the chat, the poll option, but you can also see a people tab uh, for everybody that's on the call and moderate their mic and camera privileges and or maybe even kick them out if you want. You can share the screen much like I'm doing now, uh, check some network statistics if you're having bandwidth issues and the settings tab allows you to change your devices. So all of the things you're probably quite familiar with, um, but all of this is demonstrated in code in the sample project. The student gets a very different view. Uh, they're, they're, this is kind of like an active speaker layout, I suppose, where the view is focused on the teacher. But to keep it social uh, and to keep it fun, they do get a participant bar on the right uh, that shows other students in the class. You will notice, though, that their microphone button is grayed out. Um, they are not able to unmute themselves and talk unless the teacher was to enable them using this function here. Um, they could, using the people tab, unmute on an individual basis. But this is definitely an area for improvement in the demo, is how you can make that process more seamless. Um, we had a fantastic session yesterday with one of our uh, customers and friends at Beepboop, where they're doing, solving this problem in a really innovative way using uh, some, let's, let's call it AI. I really recommend once those recordings are online, checking out that session, very insightful uh, and an interesting way in which you could improve on, on what I'm showing you now. Sometimes if you want to talk um, and you can't, a raise your hand mechanic is useful. We've implemented that here using our send app message or our data layer at the daily. So you can raise your hand, the teacher will see that and unmute you so that you can talk. And yeah, I guess polling is essential part of any online class experience. Uh, what you're seeing now is the teacher view so that they can type a question, uh, add some answers, submit that to the class. So this is what the student would see based on the answers that you provided uh, and then see the results of that poll. Uh, all of this is done um, on the client side. So there's no database powering any of this. It's all a single page JavaScript application. Again, all of these concepts can be built on but for now, we've kept it very simple as, as a starting point. For whiteboarding, it, we obviously want to have that as a collaborative tool. We used a third-party plugin for this. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's basically if, once you turn on the board, every student on the class will see this view. Uh, and only the teacher right now has privileges to to draw on it. But you could, of course, change that to be more collaborative if you wanted to. So yeah, uh, we've done we've done a lot there, and we've covered a lot of ground. Uh, you can try out the hosted sample at the link uh, I shared it in the chat, uh, or you could build or deploy your own if you wanted to kind of build on this as a starting point um, by visiting the Git repo. If you scroll down on the README, there's even a button there that uh, I think it says deploy to Vercel. And if you have a Vercel account, if you don't know what that is, don't worry. But if you do have a Vercel account, clicking that button will, I think, in a couple of minutes, spin it up uh, and you can try it out yourself. Um, how could we take this further? What are some of the things we're thinking about as we kind of develop this project? There's the breakout sessions. I think that's uh, an essential part of a call experience. Uh, we have a separate demo for that. And I've got a little link at the bottom of this page uh, if you want to see some of the other demos that cover off some of the, uh, the bullets that I've listed here. So you have the breakout sessions where you can go into a, like a separate room with someone if you were doing like collaborative exercises. Uh, recording, uh, I mentioned earlier that there's huge scope for how you know classes can be recorded as kind of post post class content um, daily supports all of that and we have a demo that shows how recording can be done emoji reactions everybody loves emoji reactions flying emojis uh, it, it's always there um, we haven't included it in this demo but we do have a separate one if you want to do that um, I think the raise the hand mechanic kind of covers that off but if you did want to add that uh, add, add more to that uh, there's a demo to show how I think document sharing and collaborative working is uh, one we kind of thought about. Um, it depends on the use case, but it might be helpful to have a Google Docs window open or whatever it might be for some collaborative coding session or if you just wanted to share notes. Um, again, in the same way we've shown how to create the whiteboard, you could do the same with, with Google Docs or whatever tool it is you want to use. And I guess I was also thinking about ways in which the various different moderators exist um, you could have multiple assistant teachers on a call or passive viewers, something like that. Um, I was also thinking about how parents might want to join a class but not be seen. Um, so I think kind of creating different roles within within this demo would be interesting and a, a good idea to explore. And finally, having private messaging in the chat. I guess I'm thinking about when I was in school, uh, I would always want to have you know cheeky conversations, whatever. Uh, maybe you'd want to extend the chat function to include private messaging. Uh, and there's plenty of uh, third party chat providers out there that you could use to do that if you didn't want to build it yourself. So yeah, have fun building. Um, this is all available online, uh, like I said, and the links are in chat. And very happy to answer questions if anyone has them. But feel obviously free to reach out to me at john at daily.co should, should you want to. I am going to stop sharing my screen just a second. Let me just read through some of these questions. So Raymond, you asked about breakout rooms. Um, I think I covered that off. Yep. Thank you, Akil, for linking to the, the demos repo. Malone, absolutely. Um, you could most definitely have multiple rooms at the same time. Uh, the demo I've shown uh, in the in the interest of time just shows how you can create one room and share that to a bunch of students. But you can create multiple rooms, uh, and there's ways to do that programmatically or via the dashboard. I think that said, I'm not getting any more questions through, so I'll leave it there. Thanks everybody for joining. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll follow up soon with more content on this. I know that the demo is something we created just for this event. So please check it out, give it a try. And yeah, we're, we're here to, to help if you need anything. Thanks everybody.